So clearly we need to talk about Pal World, the game that blew the F up across the weekend and has sold over 5 million copies according to developer Pocket Pair, the game that was kind of advertised as Pokemon with guns, even though in reality when you get hands on with it like I have been playing across the weekend, there's a lot more to this game overall. However, Pal World is at the center of a huge controversy already as we, you know, start to close out January and I think it's going to be one of the most defining conversations of the year. I feel like 2024 was already the year where we're going to be talking about AI implementation in video games. Not necessarily that that is the case here, but we'll get there. Um, and it was already this big talking point as to just how much AI in our lives are we comfortable with. And like I said, Power World is already at the front of that. Um, and let's break some stuff down. So we have over 1.2 million users on Steam. This is the fifth most played game in Steam history. According to IGN, it's already outsold Spider-Man 2, The Last of Us 2, and God of War Ragnarok's initial sales periods, with developer Pocket Pair saying they've sold over 5 million copies in three days at around £25. That's without counting Xbox or users on Game Pass. This is a huge, huge success for the developers themselves. However, when you start delving into the machinations of what brought this game together, that that's where it starts to get fascinating. Allegations of using AI in the game's design based on how similar many of the PAL creatures are to existing Pokemon is at the front of the controversy. And it's not just that. There's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild music, Minecraft slash survival game style crafting mechanics, Death Stranding's item completion animation, Fortnite's axe swinging animation as well, and the menus are very similar to Ark Survival Evolved. We have Pocket Pair's CEO Takura Mizobe speaking to Wired in 2022, giving a very illuminating quote as to his approach to game design, that being literally addressing the idea of whatever's trendy and cashing in on that entirely. Mizuwe said back in 2022 that as someone who went through a selection process over at Nintendo, a potential hiring process, he said when it comes to making games, Nintendo has a strong philosophy of creating new and unique games with high quality, and this was questioned at the Nintendo game seminar that he attended. I have a deep-rooted desire for my work to be enjoyed by as many people as possible, and to that end, if there are good ideas in the world, I pick them up and I don't necessarily have to be particular about originality. I'm thinking about it, I want to make it more casually. I think it would be a good idea to create things in a way that just jumps on what is trendy, lol. <laughs> Oh my god, I mean, yeah, you know, if, if something's trendy and <laughs> it's a fun gameplay mechanic and you can roll a bunch of stuff together, you know, I mentioned that I've already played Power World, I did jump on it across the weekend, but I want to shout out Prince of Persia, goddammit, this Prince of Persia's getting buried right now, <laughs> it doesn't stand a chance against this thing. Um, but yeah, you know, you have that approach, I'm going to break down both sides of this, there are two sides to this coin, at least as they are emerging. Um, there is that side of it that just says you're a game developer or you're a creative in general, you see something that you want to put your particular spin on, that spin might not be very impactful, might not be very meaningful, but you want to bring together a series of mechanics and ostensibly cash in. We've seen that a lot from the AAA space. You see the likes of Suicide Squad right now going, hey, what if we took a supposedly bankable IP, a, de a, a bankable developer, and then put a bunch of weak spots on some bosses and loot mechanics and things like that and did a game as a live service. We've seen this approach to game design before. I feel like we see it every other month in the modern gaming industry. And this is someone on a much smaller scale, do, you know, employing the same philosophy. The other side of this, though, is the AI side and the fact that Mizobe and his team are all in on AI in game development, i.e. the idea being that you could train some sort of AI to generate the designs that are in the in PAL world itself, the little PAL monsters, the argument being that they were they came from some sort of AI algorithmic generation thing and not from a human brain or whatever. Uh, Mizobe has tweeted a lot about using AI over the last few years, loves the idea of it, loves the conversations around it, um, and one of the things um, in regards regards to Pocket Pair as a developer, one of the tweets that Mizobi put out there was that they started implementing AI in their various um, processes across a given gaming day, a coding day when they're making the games. And according to him on his tweets, um, his team were then very, very upset that the AI was generating better assets and better uh, quality ideas than the humans could create. This is what's led to a huge potential, you know, misunderstanding as to how Power World has been created with a lot of people going, look, you have a developer and a team who would love the idea of AI and the reality of how AI works being, you know, taking established works that already exist online and reconstituting them and algorithmically regenerating something else. The idea being that whoever those original creators are, potentially Pokemon or whichever other uh, IP is being taken from, that they're not then being credited properly. And then Power World and Pocket Pair and Mizobe get to make a sweep 
sweet mint on the side. Like I said, they've sold over 5 million copies of this thing. They are overnight millionaires immediately. Right now, there's nothing that, you know, shows that proves that they literally auto-generated a Pokemon game. Um, I don't even know what software would do that, to be honest. Um, but the controversy is very widespread. There are a lot of people showing on social media, the Reddits, the Twitters, whatever, showing comparisons between the PAL designs and the Pokemon designs as only one particular method of comparison or means of comparison. For me, the immediate thing was Breath of the Wild. As soon as you start the game, you're coming out of some ruins. The music cue is almost identical to Breath of the Wild. And then from then on in, you get a lot of Pokemon comparisons like um, the Lamby or whatever the hell the little sheep thing's called. It looks a lot like a Wooloo that was in Pokemon across the last few years. The comparisons are immediate. However, just a comparison doesn't necessarily mean that a copyright has been infringed. We had lovable gamer lawyer Richard Hogue weighing in on this as well, saying that the differences in gameplay for PAL World are too great for a copyright lawsuit to stick. And copyright lawsuits are notoriously hard in the creative field anyway. Hogue said the game itself is a Minecraft, Zelda, Monster Hunter mashup unlike anything Pokemon has put forth, so there's no winning there. He actually suggested that going forward, Nintendo would be better off looking at Power World and, you know, looking at the various things that the game does and implementing them into Pokemon. Lord knows the Pokemon IP and the state of the games is largely rock bottom, um, which I'm going to get to in a bit. I think that's part of the reason why Power World has blown up so much. Some of it feels like a thinly veiled message to Nintendo just saying, hey, look, if anything, you know, quality comes along that has a big enough marketing push to it or a conversation around it, we're going to put our money over here because Scarlet and Violet on Switch last year or the year before were, was on fire. That thing was unacceptable. It's still a technical embarrassment to this day that Nintendo barely addressed. The game can't really run with a stable frame rate. It still has various frame drops in the items that are in the background. It's just an all-round absolute unacceptable mess for what is by far one of Nintendo's biggest IP. So right now, like I said, we have two sides to this. You have the side that look at PAL World and say, look, that thing is incredibly similar to Pokemon, to Zelda and its music cues, to Fortnite in regards to the axe swinging animation or whatever it is, and therefore it's creatively bankrupt or whatever. What the hell is this team doing? What the hell is Mizobe talking about? There's no way that this thing can stand on its own two feet when Pokemon is right there or whatever other game you want to point at is right there. Why are there not more lawsuits? And that's just one side of the controversy. The other side is that Takaro Mizobe just wanted to make a trendy game, cribbing from all the popular mechanics of today. Craftopia was literally Breath of the Wild worth crafting, and upcoming game Nevergrave looks like a direct copy of Hollow Knight. The overall takeaway here is that most people are just responding to fun enough gameplay mechanics. They don't even talk about the reality that Power World is completely fun and enjoyable to play. It's very stock. It's very, you know, survival game 101. It's exactly what you think it is. Survival mechanics plus Pokemon catching, and then over time you get better base building mechanics. You start defending your base. You start fighting waves of enemies, etc. There's a lot of nice little mechanics in there, and it's very, very fun in a multi player space, but clearly that's enough to get over the finish line. That's enough for Pocket Pair to bank millions over the weekend, and that seems to be enough for almost a million people to be playing concurrently on Steam. We haven't even factored in the Xbox release, which the game is currently in uh, early access over on Game Pass. You can go download it right now, um, and developers Pocket Pair are talking about a PlayStation 5 version in the future, but like I said, we haven't even factored in the Xbox player numbers at all. We have millions of people on the PC side, and uh, we're yet to see the full ramifications of the console base catching up as well. The sales for this thing are absolutely insane. And it's not like it's the first Pokemon style game on PC either. We've had Pokemon Hunter Stories, Temtem, and Cassette Beasts was just last year to mention that as well. So what the hell is it about this game that makes it so big? My thing is, and you know, let me know what you think down in the comments. I wonder how much of the popularity behind this is just a straight F you to Nintendo. I mentioned the state of Scarlet and Violet before, and it is that general conversation on Nintendo where they're so buttoned up, they don't like playing very nice with other platforms. They're not great when it comes to legal matters either. I forget the name of the specific person that they sued. The dude was emulating stuff, and they've sued him for the rest of his life. The dude has to give up um, a portion of his wage for the rest of his life. I think he's in like his 50s or 60s, but still, Nintendo like to come down hard on people every now and then. And you also have things on the Nintendo side like limited availability of certain titles, like when they put Mario 64 and Sunshine and Galaxy on Switch, but it was only available for a few months. Nintendo are not this you know, a squeaky clean, super happy company overall. Their products are, but there's always that side to the company that given the chance, potentially, there's a lot of people waiting to, you know, retaliate and show, look, this is where we'll put our money instead. It's just fascinating thinking about just how many copies Palworld has shifted in 
such a short time. It's not like this thing had a, you know, gargantuan marketing budget. It didn't feel like it was going to be, you know, uh, the day before or abandoned in regards to these big mythical games that at least had conversations around them. Pal World was shown off at the Game Awards and has had various trailers across the last few years, but you would hardly ever know it was coming out. The conversation last week was mostly about Prince of Persia and The Last of Us 2 Remastered, only for Pal World to drop and absolutely dominate across the entire weekend. What is it about this game that makes people want to put their money into it? It's not like it's even free to play. Like I mentioned before, it is £25 to dive in, even on early access, even on Xbox, when there is still potential for some bugs and glitches and things to get in the way of the experience. Right now, I can point to a few things. Like I said, the idea of an anti-Nintendo sentiment, the idea of Pokemon fans themselves who have access to PC and Steam just saying, look, we're going to support this thing. You guys need to buck your ideas up, whether that's on the Game Freak side as a developer, whether that's Nintendo pushing too many games out every year or every couple of years, or just in regards to the raw technical state of the game. Pal World runs better than Scarlet and Violet did at launch, and that is a crazy thing to be able to say, but I wonder how much of that sentiment is in there. Um, also, you know, this is a Pokemon style game of this size on another platform. Like I said, you also have other games like Monster Hunter Stories, etc. that are available on PC, but Pal World is the talked about game of the time right now, and it's immediately available on Steam and on Game Pass. So maybe some of that is getting people to indulge as well. But another thing I'm going to throw in here is just that simplicity of it's fun enough to play and I don't really care about the rest of it. That was very much the case with Hogwarts Legacy. That game absolutely blew up regardless of the conversations that were happening around the game and in regards to JK Rowling, etc. People just like playing the game and that game easily it outsold Call of Duty last year. Like at some point, maybe it is just that simple. The thing to end on here is that Nintendo have clearly noticed um, later on on Sunday evening, at least UK time, the official Nintendo account tweeted out a trailer for Pokemon on Scarlet and Violet. It was a small sort of tips and tricks style thing where they were highlighting various features that you might have missed inside Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is given the time that this thing was releasing, I don't believe it was a scheduled tweet beforehand. I think this was someone at Nintendo thinking, hey, we should probably remind people that Pokemon exists. But obviously the reaction to that, at least on social media, at least over on Twitter, was lots of replies saying, hey, what the hell are you guys doing? Everyone's playing Power World right now. And um, we'll see how things shake out. You've got the Richard Hoke side of things saying that legally they're not, you know, there's not going to be a, a copyright lawsuit unless there are specific assets being carried from one game to the other. And yeah, the idea being that Nintendo are probably better off just learning from this rather than trying to delete Power World. It's not like Power World is a secret game that dropped out of nowhere. We have had trailers for multiple years. Many of the assets, many of the creature designs that are being held up and saying, look, this looks like a Pokemon have been around for years now. They were in those trailers and we have that side of things. We have the general sort of aggravation around the AI implementation in video game space side of things where people just don't want AI in their video games even though that's been a thing for a very long time. Um, you know, you look to the likes of Speed Tree or whatever other implementations there are of auto-generating entire forests or open worlds and things like that. And then you have the side of it, there's maybe just the most simple, simplistic side of it. Pokemon with guns, with a bunch of crafting mechanics and survival mechanics, um, and it plays well enough, the, the, the shooting is chunky enough, and it runs well enough in the multiplayer space. Apparently Epic had to run an emergency meeting to stabilize the servers across the weekend, but it seems like they got there. This is just a hell of a thing and I guarantee it'll be what we're talking about for the rest of the year.